Okay. So the examples that we've looked at so far with improper integrals were ones where we were integrating, you know, the, one of the limits of integration, one of the bounds was, was in a sense, unbounded, right? We wanted to go all the way to infinity. Um, and so we rewrote the integral as a limit, and we decided whether or not the, the limit exists, and that's how we decided. It's exactly the same story if you're trying to integrate and there's a vertical asymptote that you encounter somewhere on your region of integration, right? So if there's a vertical asymptote, and at one of, say, your limits of integration, then what you do is, again, you rewrite things as a limit, and you check to see if that limit exists. So for example, in this first one here, we should take this and we should rewrite this. Of course, there's a vertical asymptote at zero. So we write it as the limit, a going to zero from the right, integral from a to one, one over root x times dx. Okay. Now, that's x to the minus one half, so power rule says that we're gonna get um, two root x, and we evaluate from a to one. So we have the limit, a going to zero from the right, two times root one, so two minus two root a. And of course, as a goes to zero from the right, root a also goes to zero. So we get a limit of two. Okay, so that's all well and good. Moving on, we get to something like this. Uh, this, is, this is sort of one of these integrals where, you know, you're, first year calculus student might make, a, make an easy mistake here, right? You've just, so imagine you're in Calc 1, you've just learned the fundamental theorem of calculus, you really enjoy applying the fundamental theorem, and you go ahead and you apply to something like this. You take the antiderivative, you plug in the endpoints, you get an answer. Um, minus 2, I think you get. Um, well, that can't be, right? This thing is positive. Uh, okay, how do you get minus 2? Makes no sense at all. Right? Well, of course, uh, the reason that you don't get a sensible answer out is that there is no sensible answer. The integral, in fact, doesn't exist, right? Because fundamental theorem of calculus only applies to functions that are continuous on your region of integration. This one certainly is not. There is a vertical asymptote at 0. Now, if you want to treat this as an improper integral, what you should do is first rewrite it as the integral from minus 1 to 0, 1 over x squared dx, plus the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x squared dx. Okay, write it as a sum of two integrals. Now, um, at this point, you really should deal with each integral separately, right? Um, in order for the original improper integral to converge, each of these two pieces much must individually converge, right? Independently of the other, they have to converge. Um, so it doesn't count if somehow, you know, you get some convenient cancellations between the two and, and you get an answer. No, you have to deal with each one separately. So we look at, say, the integral from minus 1 to 0 of 1 over x squared dx, and we can say that that is the limit as b approaches 0 from the left of the integral from minus 1 to b of 1 over x squared. So that is the limit as b approaches 0 from the left of minus 1 over x evaluated from minus 1 to b. So that is the limit as b approaches 0 from the left of minus 1 over b uh, minus, minus, minus 1, three minus signs there to deal with. Um, and that limit comes out to be infinite, right? Um, now, uh, we'd also get infinity for the other one as well. So both of them become infinite. Um, and, but it's enough to have just half of it diverge. So if either of the two halves diverge, in this case both halves diverge, but as long as one of them does, um, then we can say that the integral overall diverges, right? If at least one piece diverges. In this case, they both do. Okay, um, so that's how you handle integrals um, where there's a vertical asymptote somewhere on the, on the, on the region of integration for your function. Um, next up, we're going to look at what you do 
when you don't necessarily know how to find an antiderivative, but you still need to decide whether or not an improper integral converges. Right? Um, so we'll look at some methods for deciding on convergence versus divergence that don't necessarily involve evaluating the integral.